G'day guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're going to be unboxing, installing and reviewing the Fnatic Podium Advanced Paddle Module System. So this is something that has been on its way to me for about three or four months now. I actually pre-ordered it right back at the start of the year and have been waiting ever since to get my hands on it. So I'm very excited to finally get to install it. Now I do want to mention here that I did pay full retail for this product. It's not an endorsed video or a paid video or anything like that. So everything that I say in this video is my own personal opinions, nothing more or nothing less. That said, I do have an affiliate account with Fnatic as well. So if you are wanting to purchase one of these sets, I would love if you would do so using the link in the description below. And 5% of the profit from that goes back to the channel so I can buy more gear, do more reviews, install more stuff and bring more content to you guys. So thank you very much for your support. But anyway, so what we're doing in this video is unboxing it, showing you what you get inside the package, installing it on my Formula V2 wheel that you see in front of me here, and then testing it out. We'll test it out in F1 2019, see if it works there, because I know that's something that a lot of you guys are wondering about. And also test it out in a couple of other titles as well just to see exactly how it works. I'll also take you through the software setup side of things as well because I know there's a couple of little things that you need to do to get these working and it's been a little bit confusing for a few people. So I'll endeavor to explain that in the best detail I can as well. Now if you've been watching my videos recently you would have seen and you can see in front of me right now in fact that I've got these little magnetic paddle shifter mods already on the Formula V2 wheel. Now that was a $20 modification to install those and it made a massive amount of difference to the overall feel of using the wheel. Now this system has very similar magnets, so neodymium magnets installed on it. So it's going to be interesting to see whether a $200 solution feels much better than a $20 solution. Obviously the podium paddle module has a lot of other features and benefits as well, which we'll cover in more detail. But anyway, let's get everything over on the bench, get it unboxed, get it installed and put it to the test. So opening up the box, you're immediately presented with a beautiful set of carbon fiber paddles. You can see the upper paddles are sort of interwoven with this beautiful gold golden sort of flake which looks really really nice and they are genuine carbon fiber as well it's not a FRP with a carbon layer overlay or anything like that they are solid carbon fiber all the way through at least as far as I can tell and they're certainly extremely lightweight and extremely strong as well so very very nice finish there they're definitely an automotive grade product so you can see here the instructions that actually come with the wheel, not with the paddles. So the, the back of the box actually references these instructions. You can see, very straightforward, we're just basically undoing two screws, undoing two bolts and removing it. So I like to install it into the foam padding that comes with the wheel, just to protect it all from any damage. And we start off by undoing the two screws on the front. So these, it says in the instructions to loosen them, but you do actually need to remove them all the way out to remove the plastic cover. So make sure you don't lose these, you are going to need them later on. So with the screws removed, simply flip the wheel back over, the plastic cover will slide straight off and then give the two wires a slight little tug there to remove them. There's no clips or anything like that, you just need to pull them to remove them. And then we flip the wheel on its side, undo the two bolts with the Allen key that are securing the existing shifter in place. And then simply thread the wire through and that is the shifter removed. So before we install the paddle module onto the wheel, we want to install the carbon fiber flaps. Now you've got these little metal spaces that you can use if you're finding that the paddles are a little bit too far away, but I found with my relatively small hands they're in exactly the right spot without the spaces. So simply screw down the carbon fiber paddles using the screws provided, they're the shorter screws that come. If you're using the spaces then you're going to want to use the longer screws. So I found it was easiest to install the two bolts before trying to install it onto the wheel. So put the two bolts through the holes and thread the cable through. Now there is a little thin wire inside the wheel, a little red and black cable that you do need to be a little bit careful of. You don't want to accidentally snag that and end up tearing it off the connection. So just take your time with this, thread it through. It's not difficult, you just need to have a little bit of patience here. Thread it through. and then tighten the two bolts to secure it in position.
So repeat the same steps again to install on the other side and then it's time to plug in the cables. So these aren't keyed, but they do only go in in one direction. If you try to force it in upside down, you will bend the pins. So have a look at the orientation of the pins. They're a little bit closer to the bottom than they are to the top. So just make sure you line it up. If you do bend these, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have to send it back to Fnatic to get it repaired. So they are marked as left and right, so you can't really get it wrong. And then simply tuck the cables away back inside the wheel. Reinstall the plastic cover so it just slides into position, flip the wheel over, reinstall the two screws that you removed at the start. And that is it. Alright, so we've got the wheel installed back on the wheelbase now and we've got our driver software open. Now this is the 335 driver, the latest official driver that is out. And I'm noticing straight away here that it's not showing up the podium shifters here and the little top buttons here, so the, um, the ones that we use for DRS and curves and things like that are the ones that are showing up as the shifters. We're, not, we're sort of seeing our clutch is working, but it's also mapped to the same pedal as our foot clutch. And then the one on the left is showing up as our handbrake. So obviously we've got some sort of an issue going on here. Now if I go into the driver software under settings and click on show product picture with advanced paddle module. So we'll and I apply that and open it back up again. So now we can see it's showing the paddles, but again, the top and bottom switches are actually showing as the middle paddles and then the clutches aren't really showing up at all. So obviously we need to install a new driver. So this is where the instructions or lack of instructions can be a little bit confusing for people. So if you jump on the Podium website or the Fanatec website here, you can see there is under the product page for the Podium Advanced Paddle Module, there is a driver, Fnatic 64-bit driver 336 beta, which is a newer version than what I have installed currently. So I'm going to click on that, download it, and install it. Accept the terms and install. All right, and it's detecting the existing driver. So we'll go close all applications and attempt to restart them. So we'll close that. Okay, and finish. All right, so it's prompting us to reboot. So we'll do that. We'll check to make sure that there's no firmware updates included in this package as well. I'll run you through all that process as well. But we'll reboot now, come back, and yeah, hopefully we can get it all up and running. Okay, so we're rebooted here, and you can see we've got a prompt to update our wheelbase to the latest firmware. So we will do that quickly now. See where it pops up on the screen. Not anywhere at the moment. Ah, right, we're flashing on here. All right, bring it across. So you can see the little blue light is flashing on the wheelbase, there's our little prompt. So we're gonna go start firmware updater. I guess I'm jumping to the other screen, sorry about that. There we go. All right, so click connect button. Okay, and it's saying press flash firmware to install the latest firmware on your device. Do not disconnect USB cable or power. So hopefully we don't get a power outage while we're doing this, or we could brick it, but I always get anxious about doing firmware updates simply because if something goes wrong while you're flashing, it can cause problems. I've never actually had that happen but let's click the button. So we're just gonna wait patiently, don't touch anything, don't close any programs or do anything fancy while you're doing this. It's probably not a great idea to be recording while you're flashing firmware, but I'm gonna take the risk for you guys and hopefully everything will go well. Okay, wheel center has to be calibrated, H shifter has to be calibrated, tuning menu settings are reset to factory default. Okay, so we're gonna to have to set all of our wheel settings from factory again. So if you're thinking of doing this, make sure you do write down your settings before you do that. It also looks like we're in Xbox mode there as well. So I'm probably gonna to have to change that as well. So I'll go ahead and run through all of those things and then we'll come back and get everything sorted. All right, so I'm gonna hold it in the center, open up the menu and then press both sticks to calibrate the center. It should take care of that. And it's drifting to the left again. I don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, well, first thing we need to do is get it out of Xbox mode. I don't know if you can see there on the screen. I'll just move the camera down a little bit. There's a little green light just there and we want that to be red. 
Okay, so to change back into PC mode from memory, it's this button plus this button. So you press them both down for two seconds, and there we go, PC mode. All right, so the light is red again. You see there, light's red, and we're good to go. So now we're saying cow, so it says cow. In menu, press both sticks. So we'll open the menu, and we'll press both sticks in. That should set our center. All right, so SFT calibration. So set neutral and press the button. So that is in neutral. Okay, that is done. Our center is set. Now, unfortunately, we did lose all of our preset settings. I'll have to go back through again and reset all of those again from scratch. We don't need to see that in the video. What we're interested in is seeing whether these paddles work now. So let's jump back into the Fnatic menu again, or the driver rather. Okay, so we hit properties. Either one, doesn't matter which one you select. Hit properties. Okay, and now it says your club swap wheelbase motor firmware is not the latest one. Do you want to update that now? There it is. So we'll update the motor firmware as well. Connect. And flash firmware. Okay. Firmware updater can now be closed, disconnected from device. Okay, we're rebooting. Whew, everything's looking good. <laughs> I think we're okay. It should recenter. All right. Wheelbase 656, motor con 22, and wheel con 22, it said. I think something like that. All right, we're looking good. Close this off. Open it again. And drag it across so you can see it. All right, properties. Okay, driver includes a new, I <laughs> think we've got another one. Driver includes a new club sport steering wheel Formula V2 firmware. Okay to install now. New steering wheel firmware will improve the functionality of your products and ensure compatibility to new Fnatic devices. Okay, so that's the firmware for the actual wheel now. So we've done the wheelbase, we've done the motor, and now we're doing the wheel. So, okay. Oh, it's vibrating. It's a little bit disconcerting. Okay, connect, and flash firmware. It's still vibrating, I don't know what the go is with that. I guess it's just letting you know it's in bootloader mode, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> All right, firmware update can now be closed. We're rebooting again. Be nice if the manual for the podium shifters included. Well, I mean, there is no manual. It doesn't even come with a manual. All it comes with is a little bit of instruction on the back here that literally just says for compatibility, but for, for compatibility information and detailed assembly instructions, please refer to the manuals used with the steering wheel. And that was the instructions that I showed you during the unboxing and assembly. But there's no mention anywhere of any of these steps that you need to do to get this working. So it'd be nice if they gave you a little bit of detail. But I guess you guys have got this video now, so you don't need to worry about it. We'll close that. All right. And we should, hopefully this time. Okay, so with everything set up here, you can see the upper right and left paddles are now functioning. So when I press this one, you see the little blue dot on the screen. Middle paddles as well are working, so we can use them for our up and down shift. Now, clutch you can see here is working as a clutch, and this one is working as handbrake. Now, what I want to show you here, and I'll record it with my phone and insert it into the video so you can see. But basically, when we have the multi-position switch here set to B, left is the clutch, right is the handbrake. When we flick it to the left, you can see on the screen it says clutch bite point. And then what happens, and I can't really do it with two hands, but you hold one and then you squeeze the other side and that sort of gives you like a two-stage clutch kind of thing going on. Flick it back to B again and you can see it says clutch and handbrake mode again. So it's important to remember that you do need to switch it to position A if you want to use the sort of double stage or twin stage clutch thing. Otherwise, you need to switch it to B if you want to use one for clutch and one for handbrake. But anyway, let's jump in now and have a look at how it actually works in F1 2019. All right, so we're in F1 2019. Now, now if you're interested in seeing a little bit more of this game before the release on the 28th of June, which is a couple of days from now, uh, you can check out the earlier video that I did a few days ago where I went through all the various different game modes in a little bit of detail, test drove a couple of different cars and tested a bunch of stuff out. So I'll link above my head for you for that right now as well as in the description. But for now, let's jump into our settings. 
and have a look at the various different controls. There's a couple of things I need to take you through here and then we'll jump into Assetto Corsa as well and see how it works there as well. So we're going to controls, vibration and force feedback. We jump down to our Formula V2 wheel and edit. And you can see we've got a standard sort of uh, analog axis is our axes for accelerate, brake, steer left, steer right. So you can see here I have my gear up and my clutch set as the same button, button number five, which is my upshift. So previously what I was doing is I was holding the upshift for my launches, holding it around sort of 7,500 RPM, then letting go of that and the car would make its way down the track. And it seemed to work pretty well, but obviously having analog clutches is a little bit nicer. And down here we have a setting for our manual clutch as well and at the moment you can see it's unassigned so what i want to show you here is we've got a bunch of different modes on the center dial here a b c and d so in a is a clutch bite point mode and i'll show you this a little bit more in assetto corsa because as i found and as you'll see in a moment it doesn't exactly work perfectly in f1 2019 at least in the time of making this video hopefully they will release a patch later on but i do want to make that clear right now it doesn't really work properly as an analog access right at this point in time so then we've got mode b which is clutch and handbrake so the clutch being a single axis on the left and handbrake being on the right and then Mode C, which is brake and throttle. So if you're disabled, you're not able to use your legs for pedals, then this is a great option there. So you have accelerate on the right, and brake on the left. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail in this video simply because I've never used a hand accelerator or brake before. So I don't really feel like I'm in a position to be able to say whether it's good or bad, but you can see on the side of the wheel, you've got about a centimeter and a half or two centimeters of travel there. So I assume that that would give you quite an amount of, a, you know, a scope of adjustment there. So it should work pretty well. And then mode D, we have mappable analog axes as well, or axes as well. So what I've found here is if we have it in mode A and we press our clutch paddles, we get a physical button there or a digital button, which is O. So what it does, it doesn't allow us to use the dual stage clutch properly in F1 2019. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a moment. If we switch across to clutch and handbrake, you'll find it's exactly the same again. So we press the button, we get a digital button that says O. If we do it again in mode D, however, we do actually get a analog axis that will show up. So I'll show you that quickly now. So there you can see X minus. So what's important to understand here as well is that when we're in mode D, it actually takes away the function of the little hat switch here or the analog hat switch. So what it's doing is it's not actually giving us additional inputs. It's it's taking the control away from one and moving it to another. So instead of being able to move this around, we now have these paddles instead. So if you do use this to look around the car or look behind you or something like that, as I do, just bear in mind that if you are using the manual clutch button, you're not able to use the hat switch anymore. So we'll start off with the bite point mode and I'll show you that inside the game first and show you how it sort of doesn't work exactly the way you would hope it would and then I'll go across and I'll show you the difference with analog as well. Okay so before we head off I just want to quickly also make you aware of a bug that's present at the moment in F1 2019. It may hopefully be fixed by the time it reaches final release in a couple of days time but as of right now when you are sitting on the grid and you're lining up ready to go the wheel pulls very violently to the right just randomly so you may see that happening while I'm sort of explaining things here that's what that is. I'm sure that they'll I'll fix it soon because it actually is quite dangerous if you had a direct drive wheel it could actually do some damage so hoping they'll fix that but basically what we're hoping will happen here is as we use the clutch here and I'll show you this in more detail in a set of courses where it actually works properly but as we release the clutch we should see a bite point and then we'll be able to take off so we'll give it a little bit of gas here pull the paddles in it shifts into first gear We'll release it to say maybe 50%, something like that. We'll just wait for these cars behind us so we're not getting bumped and pushed all over the place. So what we should have is when we release the right hand, it goes to the, bug, the bite point, but you can see nothing's happened there. And then as we release the left hand, it should release and then the car will set off. But as I release it, we basically get all the way to the bottom and then it's like a switch deactivating and the car takes off. So it kind of makes all the rest of that redundant. So I'll show you quickly once more in real time to restart the session. All right, so again, we'll give it some revs here. And launch, and yeah, you can see straight away, it's it's basically just a digital switch, so you're not getting any advantage from it whatsoever, which is disappointing, considering it's a, you know, it's a licensed product to F1, and it's kind of been marketed as being fully compatible with this game. It's disappointing that it's not working, but again, hopefully by the time the, um, the, the game fully launches in a few days' time, there'll be a patch for that 
that will fix it. And um, yeah, so I'll update you guys a bit later on. If I, do, if, I, if I do find that it starts working, I'll definitely let you know so that you're not being misled. But anyway, let's jump in. I just want to quickly... Sh but anyway, I just want to quickly show you in D mode as well, mappable analog axes. So we'll jump out back into the menu and go across to preferences and quickly reassign that control. Custom Scheme 3, Edit, and down to our Manual Clutch again. And this time, we've got our Analog Axis. So, what we would hope is that it would just work. Okay, so this time, it's just the left-hand side paddle. There's no twin stage, so we we'll hold it straight. I'll let the other cars go again so I can show you sort of in slow motion how this works or doesn't work rather. So we'll slowly let the clutch out here and you can see still nothing, nothing, nothing. We're almost at the bottom now and as we get to the bottom, the car goes. So again, even though it's an analog axis, it's basically just operating, operating like a digital switch. It's basically just an on-off switch. So no real advantage, unfortunately, over the system that we were using before where we were using the upshift. I mean, you let go of the upshift and the car goes. You let go of the paddle and the car goes. Really no difference. So, a bit disappointing in that regard. Now, the other thing that I do need to show you as well, under preferences here, go back into control scheme again. We'll edit the same one. So, another thing that I'd intended to do was actually use these top switches, so this one and this one, for my... ERS and or DRS and uh, what was it pit limiter now So we activate DRS Flick the switch Nothing happens. So even though they're definitely working because we tested it before in the Fnatic profiler Nothing is happening and I tried all the various different modes here as well And I can tell you unequivocally as of right now those two top buttons are not detected so you can't use them for ERS or um, DRS or anything like that in F1 2019 either, which, so again, a little bit disappointing, but I will definitely let you know if it does get fixed in the future. But in terms of the actual feel of the paddles, they do feel really good. I'm not gonna drive around the circuit now because I mean, you've seen me drive before, still getting used to this game, but they do have a really nice mechanical feel to them. I've been disqualified now. And you know, they do feel really nice. It is a slight improvement over the magnetic shifters that I had before. I definitely wouldn't spend $200 just to get these over a $20 mod, but they do feel they do feel really nice and the, the carbon fiber doesn't flex too much or anything like that. So definitely happy with them in terms of that, but yeah, disappointing that the clutch doesn't work properly in F1 2019. But we'll jump in a set of Corsa now and I can show you how it does work. So I was originally going to show you this in iRacing, but then I remembered that I have the F1 mod for Assetto Corsa and I thought that would be a better way to test this out, but I'm not trying to hide iRacing or anything like that from you. This does work with iRacing. I did test it out and it all works fine. Just thought this was a better way to demonstrate it. So basically, any game that supports or any sim that supports manual clutch, so an analog access, it works absolutely fine with this setup. The only problem with F1 2019 is that because it doesn't support an analog clutch, it's not really working at the moment. Hopefully they will add that later on. But what I wanna show you here is the difference between your normal clutch and handbrake mode versus mode A, which is the clutch bite point mode. So you can see there on the screen, when I flick between the two modes, it tells you what's what. So in normal clutch and handbrake mode, it operates pretty much as you would expect. So we put it in gear, we accelerate, whoop, I stalled it. <laughs> put it in gear, put the clutch in, accelerate, and then as we release the clutch, the car starts to move forward. So obviously the more you release it, the more engagement you get and the car begins to drive. So we'll quickly just drive out of the pits here, get onto a straight bit of road and I can show you a bit better. So braking, we put the clutch in, we accelerate, we release the clutch, we try to minimize the amount of wheel spin we get and we take off, everything is fine. So the way it works with bite point is a little bit different, a little bit more complex, but it allows you to theoretically get the absolute perfect launch. So what we're gonna do here now is we have our left and right paddles. Now it doesn't matter which hand you use for what, works either way. And the other thing that's really important to understand here as well is that this is controlled by the wheel software itself. So it's not a requirement that the sim software actually supports the dual stage clutch. It's really clever the way they've integrated this and I'll show you it now. So basically as far as the software is concerned, it's still just an analog axis, but when you put one hand in and then hold the other one, you can see here you've got a number that appears on the screen. 
And as you release one hand, and it doesn't matter which hand you release, you can see there I'm releasing my left hand, but I can do the same thing with my right hand, as long as I've got the other paddle fully depressed. You can see here there's a number from 0 to 100, and that is a percentage, right? So basically, this is the bite point. So you want to figure out exactly where your bite point is. In this car, it seems to be around sort of the 35%. So what you want to do, hold the clutch fully in with one hand. Again, it doesn't matter which hand you use. Hold the clutch at the bite point for the other hand and then accelerate. And then when you release your left hand, it automatically goes to the bite point and then you release your right hand or the other way around if you want to do it the other way around and then the car gets going. So we accelerate, release our left hand, we're biting and then we release our right hand and we're set off. And you can see when we do that, I mean that was a terrible example because I'm completely new to this. But you can see when we do that, we don't get the, hor we don't get the horrendous wheel spin. So we'll try once more here. So accelerate, find the bite point, back off the throttle just a little bit, left hand, right hand, go. And we've got a little bit of wheel spin again. But you get the idea there, so really, really clever how they've integrated that. And as I said before, it's not reliant on the sim software or anything like that. This works with any game that supports an analog clutch. Okay, so before we wrap up, I just want to show you one other thing quickly. So I'll pull the wheel off here. Now, one thing that I do think that they could improve is if you look in there on the side, you can see the wiring for the hall sensors there is actually kind of visible still. So I don't really understand why there isn't a little cover that sits over that. Now, because your thumb sits in there quite nicely, it's nice and out of the way and it's not sort of snagging on the buttons or anything like that, but there's no real reason why they couldn't just have a little cover over the wiring there that you clip on once obviously you wouldn't be able to get to the bolts if you had a cover on there when you first did those bolts up but i really don't see any reason why they couldn't just have a little cover over those sensors so that it's a little bit more protected it looks a little bit kind of like an afterthought and if you look at it from the front you can actually just see i don't know if you'll be able to see it there just on the side you can see the wiring just kind of in there and you know i, I don't know like it just it kind of annoys me for a 200 dollars piece of equipment, you'd think that they would have a little metal cover over it or something like that. It just worries me that my finger might catch on it or something like that and I might end up damaging that wiring. So, yeah, look, I mean, I'm really impressed with the product. Don't get me wrong. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I spent the money. I'm, well, I'm not glad I spent the money, but I'm glad that I bought it. I am happy with it and I think the clutches are absolutely fantastic. Obviously, the magnetic paddle shifters feel really nice as well. But, you know, for such an expensive product, I don't really think that it's, you know, it, it, it shouldn't really have exposed wiring, I don't think. But anyway, that's a personal opinion thing, but it is one thing that I wanted to point out. But otherwise, really, really happy with it, guys. So I hope that this video has been interesting and informative for you guys. Hit the thumbs up button if you have found it interesting and useful. Make sure you share it as well in your various different groups for people that might be struggling to set up the software side of things. But so I'm gonna hit the track again now and get a little bit more experience with this. I'll let you know how it goes over the course of the next couple of weeks. And if they do end up adding support in F1 2019 for those clutches, I will let you know as well. But thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.